1947. Philip had finished his cement work in only three years. We were finally going somewhere with our lives, and he was so excited to be going to Boston. Philip had been accepted at the prestigious Boston University School of Medicine. And he had something else to celebrate. He was now dating a lovely young woman named Megan McAllister. She's really, like, introverted and quiet. I don't think she had, like, a mean bone in her body. She was just, like, a really sweet girl. Megan was another pre-med who grew up in Little Silver, New Jersey. She and Philip met when they both volunteered at a hospital in Albany. She didn't have a lot of boyfriends before Markov. He must have seemed like the real deal to her. God, he was going to medical school, he was tall, he was good looking. It's what every woman would want in a husband. And she, I think, worshipped him. Megan moved to Boston with Philip, and they got engaged. Their wedding was set for August 14, 2009, at a seaside restaurant in New Jersey. Megan made a wedding website, and she was always updating it, and everyone was telling her congratulations on Facebook, and she just seemed really, really happy and really, really excited. Megan was at home with her parents during the week when police believed Markov had transformed into the Craigslist killer. But she returned to Boston on April 18th, and police saw her with Philip as they watched his apartment building. She was, appeared to be in a good mood. She was jovial, you know, talking, smiling. Uh, he appeared to be a, a little bit distant, kind of quiet. The police kept watching Markov, trying to come up with more evidence against him. They even followed him into a store to try to lift fingerprints they could match to the crime scene. We had him under 24-hour surveillance, so we were not worried uh, that he was going to commit a crime again. Or if he did, we certainly would be able to stop it. Even though the fugitive unit believed Markov was the right suspect, they needed an ID from someone who had seen him commit a crime. We did have a live victim from the Westin Hotel, which was Trisha Leffler. We did have a live victim and her uh, husband from the Warwick, Rhode Island incident. But the investigator's luck was beginning to run out. Both victims had left New England, and while the cops were trying to track them down, Markov suddenly seemed about to do the same thing. Mr. Markov came out on Monday, put a suitcase in the car with his fiancée, and proceeded to get on 95. Philip Markov was driving south toward Rhode Island. Cops knew that if he left the state, they might lose him for good.